Hey guys, Key here from Kegland and talking to you about our cannula canning machine and how to set it up for a range of different can sizes, but also can types as well. When we uh, went out to make this uh, awesome canning machine, uh, we wanted to make sure we made a machine which was compatible with many different can types as possible. So different height cans and different lid types as well. So I know a lot of you guys out there, you hate those types of systems where you buy, for instance, a desktop printer or something like that, and it locks you in to buy a certain expensive ink cartridge. And that's nothing, nothing more frustrating than that. And we didn't want to sort of push our customers with that type of rigidity saying you only have to use our particular cans. So this video is a bit about how to set up the machine, how to adjust the machine for different can heights, and also the fact that we use, uh, we've got different types of uh, chucks available. Uh, so for different can brands of cans, you'll need to change the chuck over. So I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about how to set that up as well and make sure that the first and second operation are done correctly and those adjustments are set up. Anyway, let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna do is have to unplug the machine. And then what you're gonna to have to do is take the cover off. Now, I've already done all the Allen key bolts here. So uh, for the rest of the video, I'll probably do this with this cover off. So it's a bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna show you is gonna be about this table and how to make table adjustments. Uh, firstly, when you get the machine, there's bearings that go in there. So you've got a three piece bearing set here. Now the reason we make it three piece is so it can get easily taken apart for cleaning. This is one of the few pieces which aren't made out of stainless steel. It's made out of hardened steel because the bearings and the, and the race assembly is a lot harder and longer lasting if we make it from hardened steel rather than stainless. Now, you get one of these flat pieces here where it's got a well, flat piece on one side there, and on the other side, it's got a slight little dimple because that's where the bearing sits in. So I'm gonna face that with that dimple facing upwards in the table there. Then I'm gonna get this bearing race. I'm gonna put that on top. And normally what I'll do is get a bit of grease or oil and put it on there. So we normally use the Haynes Lubrifilm just because we've got lots of it lying around this place. So just give it a little bit of a smear on there and then put the top on. Now with the top piece, once again, I'm facing this little dimple side here towards the bearings themselves. Now when you buy the machine, it comes with this short table here. Now this short table is suitable for our larger 500 mil cans. That's these bad boys. Now most of you guys probably will just continue using these 500 cans and that's fine. However, if you wanna use one of the smaller, like these 330 mil cans, you will need to buy one of these other table spaces. So you can actually take this out, making sure the bearings stay in place, and then drop this on top, and then the cannula can be used on these smaller cans. Now for different types of can sizes, certainly there's like 375s and stuff like that. So for these other different can sizes, um, you can use one of these two bases, because the spaces give you some degree of height adjustment, but there's also a reasonable amount of height adjustment you can get by turning this coupling nut. And that's the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to do that. So um, get a bit of ground rod if you have some, or you can just use this Allen key. I've got like the four mil Allen key here. So I'm gonna go like this, put it into one of these holes in the, uh, uh, in, in the table. Uh, this, coupling, uh, this coupling ring here. And uh, these are done up fairly firmly when they first arrive to you. So it's the first time you've undone it, you'll have to put that in there and just give it a bit of a bash like this. Oops. And that'll undo it. And now you can see once I've loosened that coupling nut, I can actually rotate this table up and down. So you can see I'm going, uh, well, anti-clockwise and it's going up and then I'm going clockwise and it's coming down. So I do have, you know, round about 20 odd mil, 15 odd mil uh, of adjustment with this, with this table here. So I can just wind that up and down like so. One of the important things when I'm adjusting the table is I wanna have the, uh, I wanna have the, uh, the can in place like so. And I also what I wanna do is move this up into the completely up position so it's up against the chuck here. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna get the right about amount of force with the can pushing up against the chuck. So if it was like that, for instance, see how the can's rocking around, it's a little bit loose, that's no good. It's gotta be firmly against there, but not so tight that it's gonna dent the side of the can. We want just enough pressure on the chuck that what happens is when the chuck spins, it spins the can at the same time. You really don't need any more pressure than that. Um, if you go with too much pressure, it can buckle the side of the can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna put that up. You can see it can't quite lock into place there. So I'm gonna wind this table down like so and see how I'm getting closer and closer. And I can just 
Now I can just engage the handle and I can push this all the way back. So that handle's all the way back now to the, to the bump stop at the back there like that. Once I've got that in place, I'm gonna get this coupling ring and I'm gonna put my left hand, I'm gonna hold this part of the table, this top, upper beast piece of stainless, and then the bottom ring with the holes in it, see how I'm just flicking that down like that? I'm just turning that downwards. Now don't lock this in the up position, that won't do anything. So don't wind this up like that, that's not gonna do anything. You gotta wind this in a clockwise direction down to lock it in place. Now when I wanna firmly lock this in place, I wanna get that Allen key out again, and I'm holding this top piece of stainless and then just tightening it, tightening them against each other. So I'm going like that, and that is just locking that into position there. So that's fairly, fairly firm. You'll notice that it doesn't take a huge amount of force, and I've got that perfectly locked into place. Now you won't have to adjust that, hopefully, um, again for another 50,000 odd cans, because you know all of this, all of these fine adjustments we've got here, you don't have to do them very frequently. Once you've sort of set it up for that can size, you're good to go. Now the other thing with the table I have to mention is making sure that the can is properly aligned. This is really, really important. So if you don't have your can concentric, so when this comes up, it must come up completely concentrically with the chuck. Now you can see intentionally what I did when I, when I did this, I, I made a bit of a mistake and I've actually got this not quite 100% concentrically and I'm not sure if you're looking closely, you can see how this can is just clipping one side, so it's not 100% concentrically. So a telltale sign if the can is not concentric is one of these ones here. It's basically got uh, um, you know these, these little wrinkles or crimples uh, on the side of the can. Now what's happened here is the can has come up not quite straight with the chuck. Then what happens, particularly on the second operation, so I push the lever away, but then I bring the lever forward towards me, and that second operation will often cause dents in the side of the can if your can is not 100% concentric. So if you ever get these sort of little dimples, I would check your table alignment, make sure that that's perfect. Now when aligning the table, you've got a couple different options. Now firstly, I'll show you how to align it using this coupling nut here. This is just for fine adjustment, so if it's only a very slight alignment, you can undo this coupling nut, and then what you can do is move the table with one hand. So I'm gonna got my left hand here, and with this piece, of, uh, this piece of steel here, I'm gonna basically move this left or right or backwards and forward, depending on which way I need it to go. And once I've pushed this in that direction, while I'm using my right hand to tighten up this coupling nut at the bottom, so I've basically got one hand on here, another hand on the base, and then I'm holding those two together. So in that instance, I was basically pulling in one direction there, and you can see how now, see it's, it's just touching at the back first, so it's not quite perfectly concentric. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually just undo that, pull it in that direction, while I'm doing that coupling nut up, and now it's basically spot on there, it's perfect. So it's just grabbing hold of that lid on the chuck concentrically, so that when that just goes in, it's perfectly concentric. Okay, now another way to make a table adjustment to the alignment uh, is from the underside of the machine. So if it's just a very, very small alignment, uh, then maybe this coupling nut will do the job. However, if it's a greater alignment, needs, a, needs to move a couple of millimeters or something like that, then you'll need to flip the machine onto its back. Now this is something you may wanna look at if the machine has you know, had a bit of a fall or something like that, you've dropped it from a reasonable height. Um, then you may want to have a look at this. So you just get the Allen key and you can undo these three Allen key nuts here, like so, whoops, like this. And then what you do is once you have all of these three undone or just a little bit loose, you can move the table into the, uh, the right position and then do those nuts back up again. So once you've done your table height adjustment, the next thing is to look at the rolls. So I've got the left and right hand roll here. The left hand side here is what we call the first op roll. So that's the one that first comes up against the can to uh, start the seaming process. Now it's really important that this one in particular, we get really good overlap. So between the can body and the can lid, we want these two to basically hook over each other and completely interlock. It's called actual overlap in the manual. So that's the figure that we're trying to get, uh, get to be as high as possible. Usually at a minimum, we want about 0.4 millimeter overlap, but that's spoken more about in the manual with the exact figures in there. So uh, in order to adjust these rolls, they're both quite similar in the sense that the Y gap or the vertical gap 
um, can be adjusted by the nuts on the top here. So I've got a, a spanner which I can use to do that. So basically what I do is I get the spanner in the top here and you can also uh, use the spanner in this little gap to also undo and maneuver that nut. And that will allow me to bring this uh, roll up and down in the Y direction. The other thing is with the X direction, I can use the Allen key and the 10 millimeter little wrench here to undo this, uh, uh, this lock nut and then basically adjust this Allen key in or out um, uh, depending on what I want my X gap to be. So I'm not gonna talk about exact figures here. This is more precise dimensions which we put in the manual on the website which you can refer to for the exact X and Y dimensions which we're looking for. Okay, now when adjusting the first operation roller, the first thing I'm gonna do is look at the Y gaps. That's the height of this roll. This is really important for this to be adjusted first because it does affect the X gap later on. So always do, it, do, do the height first. Now what I've done is I've loosened the coupling nut on the top of this piece. So you can see this uh, threaded uh, bit of rod here, this is now free to spin around. So with my finger here, I can now uh, twist this up and down. So what I'm looking for here is I want to adjust this in such a way that it this uh, uh, top surface of the chuck here, so that top surface there is just uh, almost coming in contact with the underside of the roll here. So if I try to bring these two together now, you can see that's incorrectly adjusted because they're colliding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this, this, uh, uh, this in a little bit, bring it up a little bit higher, and you can see now it's just, it's just touching. Technically, I think in our manual it says 0 0.05 or 0.15 millimeter approximately, but basically what we're trying to do here is get them as close as possible, but just not quite touch. So, you know, 0.05 or 0.0 or 0.15 millimeter, that's basically the thickness of like an A4 sheet of paper. So if you've got feeler gauges, you can use a feeler gauge in there, or you can get a piece of paper, and then you can just say, you fold it over in, in about half, uh, like that, and basically it should come in close enough together that it doesn't, um, it doesn't tear the paper, but it also allows the paper to fit in that gap. So that's sort of what we're after. So you see here, it's just a bit too tight. So I'm gonna tight, tighten it up a little bit. And now I'm just, there we go, I'm just kind of missing. Once I've found the right position there, and when you make this uh, adjustment, it, it's best to be pushing this because there's a little bit of play in the roller when it's undone. Uh, so when I'm making this adjustment of the height, just push it in the upwards direction and then check it with the lever like so. And then once you've got it in the right position, with the other hand, do up the nut on the top surface there to lock it into place. And yeah, you can see, actually I could do it a fraction more, so I might repeat this process again. Now, if you're doing this a few different times, what you can do is actually, with a texter, you can actually mark the threaded rod on the top, you can't quite see here, but on the top, uh, above the machine, you can actually mark that with a texter, so then you can get a bit better visual indication of how much you've rotated it uh, one direction or another. Um, but I'm just gonna bring it up slightly more. So I'm gonna wind this in just a little bit, about another quarter of a turn. And I'm still just sort of touching touching the chuck there. So I'm gonna go a fraction more. And now it's perfect. You can see I'm just missing that chuck. So if I bring this in like that, I can actually get the belt here and I can rotate that there. And it is just, oh, it's actually just, just ever so slightly touching. So I'm just gonna bring it up even a very, very slight bit more. Okay, I've turned it maybe a one eighth of a turn or so. So it is a very, very fine adjustment. Now you can see, if I bring that close in like that, I can turn the uh, turn this belt on top of the machine and it's not actually turning that roller or it's just missing by just the finest of margins there. Now with the X gap adjustment, we have to use these feeler gauges. Well, it's best if we do anyway. Now the feeler gauges are fairly straightforward to, to use. You'll have a whole lot of different leaves in the feeler gauges. So let's say we wanna measure a gap of uh, 1.15. What I do is I might have to stack up a couple different uh, of these leaves. So I've got the one millimeter leaf here 
and I might stack that up against the 0.15 together. So I add those two together, and let's say I needed to get a gap setting of 1.15, I'd actually just measure it in here. So when I bring the roll and the chuck together like that, the actual gap that I'm talking about is this gap right here. So in this is actually the uh, uh, CDLE chuck that I've got on at the moment. Um, so it's a different one to the machine uh, that, that comes with the machine. And I'm just measuring this gap like that. Now, if I've got the B64 chuck, you can see the B64 chuck looks a bit different. And it's got a, uh, I guess, a conical shape on the chuck. So this one's a bit more tricky to measure. But the main thing to remember is just when you're using the... Uh, the feeler gauges just to put them in the right position. So when I'm putting these in there, don't like stick them in there like that, of course. Um, I wanna basically pull it all the way together. And it's best if you have these feeler gauges just on a slight angle, so it's parallel with the surface of the chuck here. So I'm just basically got this on a slight angle like that and just passing this through there. And I can see it's just brushing with this uh, one millimeter and 0.15 millimeter. So I've got 1.15. Uh, thickness here set um, at the uh, at the X gap and that's just as I pass it through it's just brushing between the roller and also the chuck at the same time so that's basically how to set it up now don't take that setting I've got like the 1.15 is gospel definitely look at our online manual to get the best X and Y settings for your particular machine and chuck combination so finished with the adjustment of the uh, Operation One roller. Some of you guys might be perfectly happy with that and you're happy to go with the settings that you've got with the feeler gauges and the X and Y setting. You're all happy with all the dimensions. However, one thing you can do, which is sometimes not a bad idea, and this is definitely something I like to do, is actually get a visual indication that I'm getting proper uh, actual overlap. So this is when the lid and the can completely hooked together and then actually measure this gap or, or this overlap that I've got. So what you can do if you want to do that is get a can and a lid, place it into the, uh, into the machine, lift up the table, turn it on and I'm only going to do the first operation. So just go like this, turn it off and what I do is get that can and use an angle grinder. Now on this particular angle grinder I've got a cutting disc and this is a one millimeter thick uh, cutting discs. That's exactly the one that I would probably recommend. Don't, don't use a big thick one. It's just going to burn up the aluminium and, and it's not going to really give you a nice clean cut. So I'm just going to do this and cut a wedge out of the can. All right, so now I've cut that wedge out. I'm just going to get some of this sandpaper here and clean that up. Now it might take you a couple minutes just to do this properly. But as you can see, once I've cleaned it up, um, I can actually see the edge of the can here and get a pretty good uh, look at it. Now, if you struggle with the sandpaper, like a very fine emery type sandpaper is usually pretty good. All the other thing you can use is uh, maybe an, an eraser as well. Some of the erasers can get pretty hard, like a pencil eraser, and then you can just clean it up like that. And you can sort of see if you look really, really closely, and maybe if your eyesight's not extremely good, you might wanna get somebody else to help you with this. But what we're looking for is this actual overlap. So you get out your calipers and you wanna measure what that is. Ideally, at least about 0.4 millimeter would be good. But if we get larger overlap, that's even better. Now with the second operation roll, it's set up a little bit differently. We use the same type of controls to adjust the X and also the Y gap. So we've got the Y gap nut on the top here and the X gap using the same uh, uh, bolt on the front here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice when you see a correctly adjusted roll on the, on the second operation is this overhang here. Um, it is definitely a lot higher. There's a lot more clearance between this overhang on the roll and the top surface of the chuck. You can see that there's a reasonable gap in there. It's much bigger than what we had on the Operation 1. So it's very important to remember. It's, it's a little bit different on the setup. So please do refer to our manual with the correct X and Y gap settings in there. If you've got a really well set up uh, Operation 1, generally the second operation is fairly straightforward. There's actually a bigger window uh, of range of, uh, of how the second, uh, second roll can be set up. So it's not quite as precise. Uh, you know, it, the, main, the main job of the second roll is just to squish down on the seam itself and make sure it's tight enough. Um, mostly the dimensions of that seam will be defined by the first operation roll. So once we've done that, we can test a can out, turn the machine on, do the full first and second operation. And if you wanted to go a little bit further, we can then 
cut the seam open with the angle grinder and double check again. But usually after the first operation, if you've got good overlap, got good actual overlap, um, then you probably will have a good seam. So that's pretty much the most important thing is the Operation One roller. Now the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the different chucks and the different lids. So when you get the actual can bodies themselves, so these cans, they come pretty much all the same and they're compatible, these can bodies, with a number of different lid suppliers. So if you go around the world and you look at these different lid suppliers, the two most common ones are this B64. So this is the one that comes included with the machine. So you can see how this has like almost like a bit of a conical shape to it, I guess, the chuck on the B64. Um, then the B64 is mainly used over in, in America. Um, it's, uh, I believe it's designed by Ball is the company which uh, came up with the B64 and they've got a number of patents on that. So we basically uh, make the chucks that come included with the machine to suit the B64s because they're one of the most common types out there. Now, if you're in Europe, however, there is another big uh, manufacturer over there which they uh, have invented and make the CDL cap. Now, it's actually technically called a CDLE. Now, if you've got, got a CDLE cap, you can sort of see the difference. One has a, I guess, uh, another little step just down in the cap here. So if you try to put a CDL cap on the standard chuck, it won't really kind of fit. Definitely it's not gonna seam properly on there. So we now supply also the CDLE chuck as well. Now, if you, got, if you go around the world into several other countries or go into Africa or other parts of Asia, 90% of the can lids will be able to be able to, or beverage aluminium can lids, I should say, will be able to be sealed with either the CDLE chuck that we've got here or the B64. Changing the chucks over is fairly straightforward. We have to get out the Allen key here, so I'm basically just going to undo these two grub screws um, on the chuck. Now, if it's the first time you've done it, it might be a bit tight. Just have to give this a bit of a wriggle. Oh. Might also help if you uh, just gently pry it off with a screwdriver if you've got one handy. Flathead's probably a little bit better for this. And then I can switch that over for this CDLE chuck. So I'm just gonna put that on like so. Now when you adjust the different chuck, you might have to also adjust the rolls as well. So every time you change back and forth, you might also have to do that. So yeah, for you guys in Australia, uh, if some of you guys wanna use cans from Vizzy, this is the uh, CDLE chuck that they use. So if you've got any of the Vizzy cans, pretty much this is the same chucks. This will work on 99% of the Vizzy beverage cans that they sell. Anyway, thanks for that guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any other questions, uh, be sure to just make some comments below or otherwise just send us an email. The other thing you can do is join our Kegland Facebook community group. That's got a whole lot of uh, like-minded people like yourself using equipment like this. So if you wanna share tips or uh, got a quick question, just fire it up onto the, uh, onto the community group there and we'll answer that as soon as possible or often one of the other crew on the group will answer it for us. The other thing is, um, yeah, we want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because it supports us in helping us make more of these videos as well. So definitely subscribe at the bottom right hand corner and join the Facebook group. All right, thanks for that guys. Hope to see you next time. Bye.